We are brewing this beer because of its high potential for uh, the off flavor DMS or dimethyl sulfide. DMS in beer will make beer taste and smell like creamed corn. This particular beer has high potential for DMS uh, off flavor because we're uh, brewing it with German Pilsner malts. Normally, uh, DMS is actually removed during the boil. It's a very volatile compound. It has a low boiling temp. It's 99 degrees. The other thing uh, that removes DMS is um, vigorous fermentation, right? That makes this beer a challenge for a system like ours, which runs on a 120 volt circuit. Um, for those of you who brewed on 120 volt circuits, you'll know that achieving a vigorous boil is difficult. The max you're gonna get out of 120 volts is 1650 watts, and we're gonna be boiling six plus gallons. So the, the issue there being that because this is a lager, we're not going to end up with a vigorous fermentation either. So the yeast is not going to be able to scrub out the DMS. So again, that puts a lot of pressure on the boil. The question here is, uh, does the boil produced by a 1650 watt element heating up six and a half gallons, is that boil sufficient to remove DMS? We're brewing this beer to find the answer to that question definitively, I guess. We've been, we've been using this exact system for more than a year and we've been brewing with systems with a system just like this for like many years and we've never had an issue with DMS however we've never brewed a beer specifically trying to produce DMS and so that's what we're doing today we're, we're essentially experimenting here and we're gonna test the limits of this system and see how it does Phil's special friend. So, right off the bat though, corn, cream corn, corn on the cob, no. Mm. Not, not at all, nothing. It's pretty darn clean. The only thing that stands out a little bit from like the real crispy, clean sort of um, craft lager is that there's a tiny, tiny little bit of the green Napoli acid aldehyde. A bit on the aroma, a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's it's minimal. It's right. there. Like to be like my perfect lager, it could just be a little, a little bit crisper. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. So it's a uh, ten point one IBUs, three point four percent ABV. It's a low ABV or two. Do you pick up any hops? Yeah, we only added uh, what we point two five ounces of Centennial. Of Centennial at okay. the start of the boil, so it's really just like a bittering. So the green apple flavor that's kind of coming through, and again, just slightly. It's, it's not enough to, really doesn't even stand out. I wouldn't even call it a defect really in this. No, yeah, because like an American light lager, you know, that's that's part of the plate flavor profile so far as I know it. I'm not an expert, but. But like if you have like a Bud Light or something. Yeah, Bud Light, oh yeah, it's, I mean, this is less than that, Bud yeah. Light for sure. We didn't really aerate this. No, we've been pretty bad at that. Yeah, we've been really bad at aerating. We just bought an O2 meter and did some testing and we thought that our assumption was that splashing the wort in, splashing the, the chilled wort in the fermenter as we're transferring it was going to aerate it enough. We actually measured that with a DO meter. No. Step our aeration game up. Yeah, which is going to entail us literally taking a minute and 30 seconds to just shake the carboy. So yeah, not pitching enough yeast could cause that, which we actually, we had plenty of yeast. In. We pitched two packets, yeah. which, and it's such a low gravity. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah, yeah, we, we probably we could have pitched too. one. I think we pitched this a little bit higher and then ramped it down right. to, which, I don't know, I, I feel like people do it both ways. Um, I feel like if you start it warmer, you get a more active fermentation, and then you know you actively chill it down. A lot of people I know do it that way. Rulosity though did an article on this particular yeast, that the one that we use, the um, Safel thirty four seventy. Or Saf Lager. Saf Lager thirty four seventy. They fermented the entire thing at ale temps and didn't get any fruitiness from it. Um, hmm. Yeah, so, so it could be simply aeration. Right, just aeration. Could be. We did a, we did a diacetyl rest. I know. I mean, I, I think I think it was five days. Yeah, because yeah, I think we did it like on a Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Let it go over the weekend, and we kegged it Monday or Tuesday. So I mean, maybe we could have left it do that. You know, we could have extended the diacetyl to rest. Yeah, a day or two. This is like the perfect beer to have in the spring when you're doing yard work and right, getting exactly. the gardens ready. And yeah, I mean, I'll drink it now too. Right. But.
Nice and, good. nice and clear. Yeah, definitely clear. Did we gelatin this? I did. Uh, yeah. We added some gelatin to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's starting to pin our stride. Yeah. Which is good. I definitely brew this. Uh, yeah, I think we brew it again. I try and get 100%. it. 100%. Get that final gravity down. Yeah, do a little, a little, little bit longer of a boil. But anyway, the results of this anecdotal, non scientific, one off experiment, which is brewing a beer with a bunch of six row grain in our kettle with the 1650 watt element with the lid on cracked only slightly I knew that. are we going to end up with a bunch of dms no zero no it's super clean mm -hmm. no i'm not I'm not getting any corn no corn at all brew this it's yeah, in the uh, yeah. it's in the I highly, I highly recommend this yeah one. it's in the zymergy september october um, as well as our version will be on our website. And you mentioned Phil Blossman, Oregon, Ohio. Uh, yeah. Won the gold medal, I think it was the 2017? 2017. Gold medal, American Homebrewers Association or Great American Beer Festival. One of the, the National Homebrew Competition. National Homebrewers Competition. Yeah, so congrats, Phil. Yeah, Phil. We named ours Phil's special friend after Phil. Yeah. Phil, if you're watching this, reach out. Yeah, good stuff, man. Good I stuff. really like it. <laughs> this is a loose following of his we did not follow we didn't follow his fermentation yeah um but everything we did do the 90 minute boil phil we were inspired by you man yeah he, he also made a starter it looks like for the phil we did nothing that you did we saw your picture in a magazine and then pulled some ingredients out that phil, you used. it came out good enough <laughs> it was close yeah he made a starter with the dry yeast yeah. i've never done that yeah cool oops all right well that does it cool Cheers. Thanks for watching, yeah, guys. Thanks for watching. S -s 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 See ya. <laughs> My palate's been ruined by 20 years of poor choices, so what, what do you want from me? Cool. I'd say we're somewhat experts. <clears throat> we, we, we both drank a lot of, uh, a lot of shit beer. A lot of shit beer. <laughs> That's to say, inexpensive uh, American Latin lagers. Yeah. The, um, the Schaefer's of the world's, the, the PBR's of the beer world. Damn, Jenny Cream. <laughs> that was a uh, 16 ounce dollar Jenny Creams. All right. <coughs>